लेट सॉल्व दिस क्वेश्चन दिस इज गेट टू थाउजेंड फाइव क्वेश्चन सेट ए कोमा बी कोमा सी आर नॉन एम्प्टी सेट एंड एक्स इज दिस दिस इज सेट एक्स दिस इज सेट वाई एंड द क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग विच इज ट्रू सेट एक्स इज इक्वल टू वाई एक्स इज सबसेट ऑफ वाई वाई सबसेट ऑफ एक्स सो दिस इज द स्टेटमेंट सो लेट चेक इट आउट सो द मेथड वन इज वेन डायग्राम दिस क्वेश्चन if you see any question okay on set like this is a question related to set so you can try this venn diagram method remember this venn diagram method will not work when there are power set involved but in this question there is no power set so you can apply the venn diagram very easily so this is set x set x is basically x uh, set x is a minus b minus c and this is set y so in the venn diagram method because there are three set this is the universal set m and there are three set a b c because of three set this venn diagram in the venn diagram total eight area we have we have this area one area one is the outside area this outside area is the area one okay we have area two area two means this is the area means only a area three area three means the, the this area only b area okay area four area four means this area means only c only c okay this area five this is area five this is area six this is area seven and this is area eight so total eight area we have because we have total three set so because of three set in the venn diagram total eight areas we will have now let's see what is the area of this is this set x so what is the area of a the area of a is 2578 this is the area of a area of a means 2578 okay what is the area of b the area of b is basically 3678 this is a 3678 this is the area of b 3678 what is the area of a minus b a minus b so from this set a okay from this area of a you are removing the area of b okay so the a minus b means only that area which is only in a not in b okay that area which is in a but not in b so from this you are removing this area so what you will get so you will get 2 okay you will get 2,5 only this area you will get so this is the this 2,5 this is the area of a minus b what is the area of a minus b minus c okay so this is the area of a minus b and what is the area of c area of c we have that is 4 5 6 8 this is the area of c so from a minus b from this area if you remove the area of c then you will get the area of x and what is the area of x remember this is the area of x so from this area of a you are removing the area of c then you will get this area basically the area 2 only this area 2 you will get because what is this means from this you are removing the area of c means okay from this you are removing the area of c so the only area that it will be remaining is 2 so this area 2 is area x area of x is 2 okay let's see what is the area of y so what is the area of a minus c the area of a minus c from this area of a you remove the area of c then what we will get we will get 2 okay we will get 2,7 this is the area of a minus c what is the area of b minus c from this area of b you remove the area of c then that will be 3 okay so the area of b minus c that is basically 3,7 now from area of a minus c you remove area of b minus c a minus c minus b minus c so what is the area of y so if i ask you area of y means from this area you remove this area so that will be basically 2 so you can notice area of x is also 2 and area of y is also 2 means i can say that this is this is the x comma y actually x comma y are same and this area is x comma y this area okay so this is the area of x this is also the area of y so i can say x and y both are equal so i okay which of the following is true the answer will be option a x and y both are equal so this is this is the venn diagram method now let's see the method 2 let's see the method 2 in the method 2 you can apply this so your set x that is basically a minus b minus c now we already know these two things we know for example what is a minus b that is basically a intersection b bar okay so for simplicity what we can do you can write like this this a intersection b bar i can directly write it a b bar okay remember there is intersection between these two so this is this means a intersection b bar okay so from here what is this x this x will become a intersection b bar minus c a intersection b bar minus c again you can apply the same thing okay so this minus this what that means that means okay so a intersection b bar intersection c bar 
what that is so x is basically a intersection b bar intersection c okay uh, sorry a intersection b bar intersection c bar this is x now let's see what is y okay so let me see what is y y is basically a minus c minus b minus c what is a minus c that is a c bar minus what is b minus c that is b c bar now you can apply so this will become a c bar okay intersection a c bar intersection whole bar okay a c bar intersection b c bar now what is this so we have finally this is the area of y area uh, sorry this is the set y set y is basically this whole bar okay now here you can apply the de morgan law we know the de morgan law okay the de morgan law says like this so if you have a intersection b whole bar then that will be a bar union b bar okay so you can apply the de morgan law here then what you will get a intersection c bar and this will become b bar union union c okay now what it will become now you can apply the distributive property so it will become a c bar b bar union a c bar c okay now remember c c bar this is basically phi okay so this this we can apply basically okay c c bar that is basically phi c intersection c bar that is phi so this is actually phi and phi so i can say that a inter a a intersection a bar what this means this means intersection there is intersection between these two and that is phi and you can notice phi intersection anything so if i say that for example a phi a phi means a intersection phi phi intersection anything that is phi so actually this this will become phi and phi intersection a that will become phi so this whole thing will become phi phi union anything okay so that will be phi union a that will be a okay so i can say phi union this will be this so I, from here i can say y is equal to a b bar c bar okay so y is also a b bar c bar and x is also a b bar c bar so i can say x is equal to y okay so this is another method so so the okay so i can say x is equal to y correct this is method number two now let's see method number three this method number three is also okay uh, like this will improve your knowledge basically okay but this method will take time so in the gate exam you should apply the venn diagram method this man venn diagram method is very nice so you should apply this or you can apply this method too but this method three also we should study because this is the analytical method basically okay so what is this method this is basically the analytical method and this analytical method will improve your knowledge so you should definitely understand this for every question you should definitely uh, do this analytical method not in the gate exam but while your preparation during the preparation you should always apply the analytical method okay so let's study this analytical method here so you have basically set x and the set x is a minus b minus c and the set y that is a minus c minus b minus c okay now let's prove let's see whether x is subset okay so this is what we are going to do so we are going to prove that x is a subset of y so let's prove this first we will prove that x is subset of y this is what we will prove okay so in this analytical method first let me tell you few concepts that we will use okay so let me tell you few concepts that we are going to use again and again so first of all this we have already seen actually but let me tell you that if x belongs to a minus b what it means x belongs to a minus b if and only if x belongs to a and x does not belong to b x does not belong to b similarly x does not belong to a minus b what it means x does not belong to a minus b if and only if x does not belong to a or x belongs to b so these are some concepts that we will use okay x does not belong to a minus b what it means it means either x is not in a or x is in b and x belongs to a minus b it means x is in a and x is in x is not in b so let's see so first i will prove that x is a subset of y to do uh, if you want to do this then what you will do so first you assume that some element okay so just assume that some element let's assume some element z belongs to x let's assume some element z belongs to x okay it means z belongs to a minus b minus c so this is our assumption 
first we assume that some element z you have and this element z belongs to x so it means z belongs to a minus b minus c what this means from here what you can say you can say remember if x belongs to a minus b then x belongs to a and x does not belong to b so from here i can say that x belongs to a minus b and i can say that so this z belongs to a minus b and i can say this z does not belong to c this z does not belong to c okay so from this what you can say so this z belongs to a minus b and this z does not belong to c from here i can say that and from this i can say that z is z belongs to a z belongs to a z does not belong to b and z does not belong to c correct because z belongs to a minus b it means z belongs to a z does not belong to b and you also know that z does not belong to c so from here from here you can see that z okay because this is what we want we want this that z belongs to this statement so i can say can i say that z belongs to a z does not belong to c from these two what can i say from this and from this from these two i can say that z belongs to a minus c correct because z is in a z is not in c so from these two i can say from these two i can say that z belongs to a minus c okay and from these two from this and from this what can i say from these two what can i say i can say that z belongs to a minus b so actually not this sorry okay what we want because this is what we want we want a minus c minus b minus c okay so let's do this actually so from these two not from these two okay so let me just correct it yes from these two i can say that this will happen now what what can you say from these two okay so from these two what can you say from these two means z does not belong to b z does not belong to c so i can definitely say that a z does not belong to b minus c because z is not in b so z is not in b minus c definitely because z is already not in b so i can say z is not in b minus c now z is in a minus c z is not in b minus c from this what can you say so z is here z is not here so i can say that z is in a minus c minus b minus c and this is what we wanted okay so what we have done so this is what we have done so we assume okay initially we assume that z belongs to set x okay and then we have proven then we have proven that z also belongs to y so what this means so this simply means that x is a subset of y so this x is subset of y we have proven okay this x this x is a subset of y this is what we have proven so this is done now let's see the second part x is subset of y that is fine but now the part two okay what is the part two now we will prove that y is a subset of x now this is what we need to prove okay so basically remember y y means this is the y a minus c minus b minus c this is y and x is a minus b minus c now we need to prove that y is subset of x then what you will do very simple first you assume that some element belongs to y so let's assume that z belongs to y it means z belongs to a minus c minus b minus c okay now z belongs to this minus this what this means if z belongs to x minus y okay for example z belongs to s minus t then what it means it means that z belongs to s and z does not belong to t and z does not z does not belong to b minus c okay now from this what can you say so z z belongs to a minus c okay and this z does not belong to b minus c z belongs to a minus c here i can say that z definitely belongs to a and z definitely does not belong to c okay and what this means z does not belong to b minus c it means either z does not belong to b or z belongs to c either z does not belong to b or it belongs to c now remember z does not belong to c so this cannot happen see z does not belong to b minus c it means z either z is not in b or z is in c either this will happen or this will happen or both will happen but you can notice z is not in c so this cannot happen 
this definitely cannot happen okay because z is not in c so because of this because of this i can say that this cannot happen okay so this is the idea so i can say because of this i can say that this cannot happen so what should happen definitely this should happen it means this should happen so i can say that z belongs to a z does not belong to c and z does not belong to b now from these what can i say z belongs to a z does not belong to b from this from this and from this what we can say then okay from this one and this one from these two i can say that z belongs to a minus b and also z does not belong to c from these i can say that z belongs to a minus b z does not belong to c it means z belongs to a minus b minus c and this is what we wanted to prove so what we have done so we have proven that y is a subset of x we have also proven x is a subset of y so we can say that x is equal to y means this a minus b minus c this is equal to a minus c minus b minus c this is what we have proven okay so because you can notice this is this is set x this is set y we have proven that y is subset of x this we have done we have proven x is subset of y this we have done so we can say that x is equal to y so this is method three so we have seen three method for this question method one venn diagram method method two which is simplification method and method three which is analytical method so for this question all the three methods we have seen and the answer will be x equal to y